What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I am taking a look at the Dark Base 700 Mid Tower case from Be Quiet. This comes in at 180 USD, which is fairly steep for a case these days, I'll be honest. So I'm kind of expecting a lot for this particular price point, and I'm excited to check it out today to see if it actually is worth the money. As you can see, I've already built a full system inside of this case, and uh, I've already formulated my own opinions about it, uh, and I'm excited to share those all with you today as well. Um, for starters, let's talk about the outside of the case first, and we'll work our way to the inside as we usually do with these types of, re of reviews. Uh, I would say the construction is some of the best I've seen in recent months. I would say this is the best quality case I've seen all year. Um, which is saying a lot because we've had some really good contenders come out uh, since January, but this thing is just, it feels so solid, even more solid than the H700i from, uh, from NZXT, which comes in at $200. It's actually a little bit more expensive than this one. I'd say the build quality tops that, just it's more well-rounded. Every single part of this case is really just built like a tank, as opposed to, uh, there were some some of the drive trays, I think, on the H700i were a little flimsy, uh, things like that. Everything through and through is just so solid here. There's very minimal flex, actually no flex from what I could tell, um, just sort of messing around with the steel frame. We've got aluminum panels on the front and top. Uh, it's just a beautiful case. It also has a sort of understated look, but it looks very elegant, kind of has some nice class to it, but it doesn't stand out too much to be overly distracting or obnoxious by any means. You can see we've got a gorgeous tempered, uh, tempered glass side panel here with four thumb screws. They even have little, uh, little um, indents, so if you wanted to use like a coin or a, screw, a flathead screwdriver to tighten or loosen them, you could do that. Um, the, the, the side panel is slightly tinted, which I prefer to being uh, fully tinted or really tinted because it kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, uh, of having a tempered glass side panel. So you can definitely see all the lighting through it just fine, and it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. You've got some black strips on the top and bottom just to hide the underlying frame of the chassis so it makes it look nice and clean. Now, as far as front panel connectors go, we have a three-step fan controller with an auto mode, as well as a USB 3.1 Type-C connector. Thank God that in Q4 of 2017, we're actually reviewing a case today that has a 3.1 Type-C connector, so kudos to you, be quiet. Thank you very much for that. We've also got a uh, power button. Wait, what's the next thing in line here? Let me take a, a quick look. Woo! No, mic and headphone jacks. We got mic and headphone jacks, a large square power button with an LED behind it, a hard drive activity LED, as well as uh, an RGB button. So there's six different lights, or six different colors, I should say, that you can switch between here. And uh, also breathing mode. There's a static or breathing mode. This is the worst shot in existence. I'm sure you guys are all terribly pissed off at me right now. So you got like orange and red and you can make it either static or you can make it breathe. Very nice, very lovely. Or you can actually pipe that into a 50-50 header on your motherboard if you wanted to control the LEDs via a motherboard software. So that's fun. We've also got two USB 3.0 ports as well. You also might notice the two large ventilation strips that are going down the front of the case on either side. It's actually kind of unfortunate that if you look at the opposite side from inside of the case at that same mesh area, that you only see about 10 to 15% of it because the internal frame is actually covering a large chunk of that ventilation. Still, it looks like there's ample airflow getting to that front 140 millimeter fan that is included that is a Silent Wings 3 fan. You also get a second 140 at the back of the case. I would have liked to see three included fans for a $180 case, but what can you do? Small gripe there. Uh, additionally, we've got up to 360 or 280 millimeter radiator support at the front of the case, and you do have room for push-pull there. Uh, as long as you don't have a super fat radiator, uh, you should be just fine. Now, the top of the case is fairly closed off. You only get a few ventilation slots at the back. There is plenty of ventilation, however, at the very back of the case, right next to that panel, so you do have airflow going in through there. Uh, and I would imagine most people are gonna be reserving the top of the case for exhausting anyway, so that's not too big of an issue for me. Just like the front, we do get up to 280 or 360 millimeter radiator support. I actually have an H110i uh, installed currently, which is a 280 millimeter AIO, fit in just fine. We'll talk more about that once we crack open the side panel. On the back, you get seven expansion slots that are in the traditional horizontal position with two vertical ones. However, you do not get any PCIe riser card uh, included with this case. It's 
something you'd have to purchase separately. But bear in mind, you would be able to mount a GPU uh, vertically if you wanted to do that. So that's kind of cool. You get a cutout for your power supply, um, which installs from the back side of your motherboard. It doesn't install from the actual rear, but rather behind your motherboard tray uh, once the left, or I should say the right side panel is, is removed. And then on the other side, you just get a normal side panel with captive thumb screws, which is also very nice. On the bottom of the case, you can see we've got some large feet. You know what that means, ladies, with some rubber pads on the bottom so it doesn't slip around. There's also a full length dust filter that is removable from the front of the case. You actually have to pop off the, the front panel in order to access it. I should mention there's also a front panel uh, dust filter that's removable in the same way. Like everything else in this case, the dust filters feel very well built and they don't require you to move the case in any way in order to access them, which I think is a huge plus, especially if you generally have your PC placed against a wall or something like that. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the exterior. Why don't we go ahead and crack open the side panel and take a look under the hood. So taking a look at the inside here, we get a fairly cavernous interior with support for up to EATX motherboards. But I should mention that if you are slotting in a full-size 13-inch wide EATX board, that you are probably going to cover up the three large uh, rubber grommets there on the right of the board. So bear that in mind. That being said, the rubber grommets there are very nice, premium quality. They feel nice to the touch and they don't uh, fall out of their little holes when you're passing cables through them like some other cheaper cases do. Additionally, uh, I think those are the only rubber grommets in the entire case. At the top, you get pretty much just a long cutout where you can pass cables through for like your 12, uh, 12 volt EPS and uh, maybe some, some other fan business going on there. You get the same sort of thing at the bottom with this long cutout that sort of spans the entire width of your motherboard that's large enough for passing smaller front panel connectors through, but larger cables like your USB 3.0 20 pin are not going to fit. So in that case, you're gonna have to remove one of these uh, modular panels that are pretty much lining the top of your power supply basement, which I'm kind of confused by. I mean, I feel like they do make it look really clean by keeping them there, but it's kind of pointless when you have to remove one of them to pass through larger cables like USB 3. It, it just kind of looks awkward now that only this one part is missing a panel. So I don't know. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but um, I think it's just kind of odd because when you actually remove the panel, it gives you access to larger cutouts than what that long cutout is able to offer. So I don't know, it's just an interesting sort of configuration. It looks really nice when the panels are on, but you're most likely going to have to take one or more of them off anyway. So I don't know if that makes sense, but interesting design move there. It does look super clean regardless. Uh, you get some nice Be Quiet branding on the front of your power supply shroud, which kind of gives it a nice touch. I, I kind of like the fact that there's no LED backlit area or anything like that. Just very understated, which I like. And at the top here, we can see our 280 millimeter radiator as part of our AIO. Uh, the great thing about this is that you actually get a removable bracket for your radiator. So you only have to unsc unscrew two screws, one on either side, and the whole thing pops out. You mount your radiator to it separately, and then you install it all at the same time in your case, which is a fantastic solution. This is very similar to what we've seen on the Enthu Evolve ATX from Fantex, which uh, is executed just as well in this case, um, I'm happy to say, and it just feels really sturdy. It's a little bit a little bit tricky, like getting it in there because you are limited by the length of the, the water cooling tubes. So it's kind of hard to sort of position it straight down uh, when you're um, putting it back into place, but it, it, it gets the job done and it does work pretty nicely. Additionally, it's just nice if, you know, let's say, because earlier in the build, I actually forgot to install or plug in my 12 volt EPS connector. It was really nice just being able to unscrew the two screws to sort of pull this bracket out a couple inches so I could get back there, plug it in, and simply put it back instead of, you know, having to remove all eight of my radiator screws. So uh, that was an awesome little feature there. Now it's worth mentioning that I started this build out with a different memory kit than the one I've got in now. I actually had to swap that kit out because I was running into clearance issues with the radiator. So bear in mind if you have a 280 millimeter radiator that you're mounting to the top of this case, that it'd probably be a good idea to invest in some low profile modules like this Corsair Vengeance LPX kit that I've got here. Moving on to these weird rectangular things though, on the right side of the case. There are five of them. They're actually just cover plates for aesthetic purposes. You can remove any of those and swap them out for a modular drive cage or drive tray, I should say, for three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. In fact, each of those trays can house either one three and a half inch drive or two two and a half inch drives. However, 
Be Quiet only includes three of them, two of which are already populating the drive cage underneath the power supply tray, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Uh, and then there's only one additional one that you can put anywhere here. Bear in mind, of course, if you populate any of these, you won't have any room for a radiator at the front of your case. Additionally, if you did have a radiator, I should have mentioned this earlier, you can pop off this bottom panel to make way for longer radiators going down to the bottom of your chassis. As far as the drive trays themselves go, they're incredibly sturdy, full metal construction. They've got rubber pads on either side to reduce noise and vibration. And once you actually use a screwdriver to uh, mount your hard drive to the actual tray, it's fairly toolless after that. There's three thumb screws at the back that are captive, mind you, that uh, you basically just slot into either any of these five um, windows uh, from behind the motherboard tray and screw it down with the thumb screws. It's a very nice, clean, easy to use solution. So good on you, be quiet for that. Oh wait, you know what? Before we take a look at the backside, there's one big feature here that I almost forgot to mention. And that is just like the Dark Base Pro 900, you can actually reverse the motherboard here uh, internally. So you can actually flip the entire interior of the case 180 degrees so that the motherboard and the graphics card and all the good stuff is showing up on the right side of your chassis as opposed to the left side of your chassis like it is now. So very cool feature, offers a ton of flexibility uh, if that's your thing. Now, finally, moving on to the back here. Let me, oh, give me a second. Oh, sorry. Ah, ah. So taking a look behind our motherboard tray, you can see we've got a fairly large CPU cooler cutout, which is super handy. Uh, and that's actually being covered at the moment by an SSD tray. It actually supports up to two, two and a half inch drives with a single thumb screw on the left side. So you basically uh, loosen that thumb screw, the whole tray comes out, you mount your drives to it and you pop it back on. You can see I've already got a Crucial NX200 uh, mounted right here. Super easy, easy to use. There's an, an additional uh, single two and a half inch drive mount uh, right here with the same sort of single thumb screw mechanism. Works just the same. To the left of the drive tray, you get a fan and RGB lighting hub, and you can connect up to six four pin PWM fans. Those connectors are divided up into two separate rails, and there's a switch uh, that allows you to enter performance or silent mode for either rail. So you could have three fans going in performance and these three fans going on silence. Uh, or whatever, you know, so that's pretty cool. It's definitely flexible there. And of course you can connect an RGB LED strip. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, also cleans up cable management quite a bit. So you don't have fan wires going to all different parts of your motherboard and things like that. Now over here, we're looking at the backside of those cover plates for our modular hard drive trays. And they're kind of ugly looking, but more importantly, I wish that there was something else that we could do with this section of the motherboard tray uh, than just stare at it. I feel like there could have been some more tie down points here or um, maybe some reservoir mounts. That would have been pretty cool if you're gonna be doing some custom water cooling. For $180, I wanna see Be Quiet pulling out all the stops, which means no empty space or no wasted space uh, in the case, so to speak. So um, that's just one little minor, minor critique there. Uh, additionally, cable management elsewhere is fantastic. You get pl plenty of tie-down points uh, right here where, you, where your main section is. I would have liked to see a couple of tie-down points on the drive tray itself. That would have been kind of cool for like our 12 volt EPS can, uh, plug right here, our cable, um, and maybe a couple more to the right of the fan hub would have been nice, but not a huge deal. You do get plenty of room underneath the power supply shroud for stashing excess cables and things like that. I should mention that the power supply uh, support is up to 285 millimeters, I believe. I installed the longest power supply I currently own, which is the XP 1200M uh, uh, Extreme unit from Gigabyte and it's incredibly long and still no problems whatsoever. I was still able to stash all the cables in there. Uh, the, the power supply unit, of course, mounts from this side of the case as opposed to the very rear like we typically see in certain chassis. Summing things up here, this is honestly one of my favorite cases of 2017. It has to be. It is so good and well thought out through and through from the external aesthetics, the cosmetics, to the actual functionality, the various features, and just the level of design and build quality here is second to none. It is, I think, the best case that Be Quiet has ever put out. And they've put out some pretty good cases. So that's saying a lot coming from me. Of course, this is all subjective, but honestly, once you build in this thing, you really get a sense of how much time was invested into the overall design and engineering. Um, there are several areas that I critiqued throughout my review, but don't be alarmed. I think that just kind of comes with the territory. If you're gonna sell a case for $180, you're opening up that product to a lot more criticism. and. Uh, you know, even though I did uh, have some remarks about certain areas, no case is perfect, of course, I think that they're pretty minuscule in the grand scheme of things because this is overall a fantastic product and everyone should go buy three of them right now. 
Um, but that's pretty much going to conclude it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave your own thoughts, comments, concerns, or whatever in the comments below. And feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to check me out on Floatplane. For three bucks a month, you get early access up to a week without ads and a ton of other features coming really soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you all. Have a good one. And I'll see you in the next video.